I stand with said I got a little bite of her when I played her for the production company in Boy From Oz. That was somehow easier, I have to say, even though chewing her off was mammoth. The easier thing in Boy From Oz is that the role is actually very tiny. She only had a couple of scenes, so you could get on there and nail a scene and get off. And she didn't sing any songs that were known as Judy Garland songs. She only sang Peter Allen songs. So I could do my version of her without anybody going, well, she didn't sing like that. <laughs> this, of course, but of, but of course playing her was just fascinating because she had such a complicated and exciting roller coaster life. So to get a crack at her again and own the size of her was kind of, I mean, it's only fear that would stop me, <laughs> mentally. <laughs> That's a pretty good reason to stop. But, you know, because it's a gift. It's a gift. She's, she's the mountain. Well, I think it's about pacing yourself. It's getting yourself as fit as you can before you get in there. Yeah. And just knowing that you've got that to cover and don't try and blow it in the first scene. You've got a long night ahead of you. And the audience has got a long night. Absolutely. Because you've got to give them everything. But you kind of learn to know that you. it's sometimes easier when you have a huge amount to do. You really just have to play the moment you're in, knowing that the night is going to give everything. You don't have to play everything in every moment. So that's the only way I can tackle it. Because I've just got to go yeah. out and say the first line. You know? Dramatically, it takes place in two, two venues pretty much, doesn't it? Yeah. It's in the hotel room in the Ritz. Yeah. Uh, in the Ritz, uh, a, a, a really great suite in the Ritz in London, and then on stage at the top of the town. Yes. And so you see her, in the play, you see kind of everything of her. Because as David said, it is the last six months of her life and she needs this gig to work. And it was one of the tragedies of her that she was an incredible talent. But she was broke at the end of her life. She had to keep seeing because she just had no money. And she owed back taxes, millions in them. So she just had to keep gigging. And she was not well by the end. But she had this ability to get out there and it's this kind of thriller because you do see, the play is very clever because you see her at her best because sometimes she went out there and the, the critics just said, oh my God, I can't believe at 47, 46 she was at this point, that she still can do it. And the next night she couldn't sing at all. But that's the, that's the glory of it kind of, that you look and go, oh my God, that she could be booed off a stage red roll thrown at her and she'll come back the next night she just kept going back because there was something about the love that audiences gave her that she didn't ever really feel in her life there was something she did on a stage to people that just mesmerized and moved her and she was hopeful to the end she i was saying to david earlier that's one of the things of course i'm just drowning in her studying her all the time and the thing I keep seeing in her is that there's always this hope in her. She breaks your heart when she sings, but somehow there's hope in her eye and in her mouth, and there's still joy in her heart right to the end. She was really good at fighting. Absolutely, she was a Yeah, thing. she was a scary fighter. Apparently. Because you're the same age and the yes. same height. I will be. I'll be just younger than her when I play her. She was 47 when she died, and I'll be 46. <laughs> and she was actually a little bit shorter than me, but about, oh, something like, I don't know, 30 kilos, kilos lighter. She was very thin. No, she was supposedly something like 35 kilos, 40 kilos at the end of her life. She was very, very ill at the end. But I'm not going that far. I won't be able to walk on the stage. 
I never have. No. And yet I've always felt this little hmm with Hayden. Mm. I think that's just that silly thing. You see someone on stage, you know what he's fabulous. You feel like you've worked with them. So you don't know you don't know social? No, he could be a terrible actor. He's not. <laughs> he is a fantastic actor. Well, that's what they say. No, no, no. <laughs> You know that you've done a lot of musical productions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are some of the musicals you've done with productions? I did, well, I did do a lot of musicals. I, I saw you assassins years ago. Yes, I was very and you young. You laughed on stage. Well, don't bother to tell them that. Well, she did, she did. She, her and the other actress both broke up. They both paused. Are you sure was, it wasn't part of it? No, it wasn't part of it. <laughs> but you've done a, you, you rattle off, you've done a, a, a oh, yeah. so many musicals. You did. Uh, oh, I always really? remember when, when you did Company yeah. on opening night, you literally stopped the show and people just applauded and applauded and applauded. I think that was because I was in love. Because I had just met this man on the Sunshine Club here at the Queensland Theatre Company that Wesley Enoch wrote and directed. And, I, and Andrew was playing the trumpet on that show. And he walked into the rehearsals one day and I said to someone, who is the guy with the trumpet? And the rest is history.